Hi, this is Anne with Fiber Designs by Anne, and I'm reposting an older video with some edits. I think it still has some good ideas, and it's a fun project. Think of this as a fast and basic recipe. It is freestyle and no pattern is needed. It can be made many different ways using different techniques and tools. This is just my way and it was inspired by my fabric flower note cards. This demo quilt will be made using the machine, but handwork and embellishment could be used also. The finished quilt is approximately 6 by 8 inches. Besides basic quilting and sewing supplies, these are all the fabrics you'll need. A very thin cotton batting cut approximately 7 by 9 inches. A backing fabric cut approximately 10 by 13 inches. A back or the fabric behind your flower that will be cut 6.5 by 8.5. Some fabric for the petals. I like to use leftovers from my hand-painted sky fabric. It has a nice gradation that works well in petals. A type of green for this leaves and stem. A light tone-on-tone -tone or solid for the fast finished triangles, which I'll talk about later on. A binding fabric, which I don't usually select until I'm done with my quilt top. Then you'll need a fabric for the anchor square or rectangle and I like a fabric that either unravels, is easy to unravel, or one that can be pinked. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. And then you'll need a fusible, I like, Wonder Under or Misty Fuse. And that's all you need. The first step will be to apply your fusible to the back of your petal fabric and your leaf fabric. At least a 3 by 6 inch piece of each of those. Do it according to the manufacturer's instructions. I do like to remove any paper if there's paper on your fusible before I cut my shapes out. When it comes to the anchor square, what I call the anchor square, if it's going to be unraveled, you would cut the size that you want. I usually don't go larger than three and a half, so it might be three by three and a half or three inches square, three inches, three and a half inches square. Cut the size, unravel it to the size you want, then apply the fusible to the inside. That would go for a, this is a beautiful silk or a canvas, even cotton can be unraveled. If I'm going to use a fabric that's going to have a pinked edge, either with pinking rotary or pinking scissors, shears, I would apply the fusible, peel the paper away, and then I would cut it. And that's how you do the anchor square. With the fused petal fabric, I am now going to just cut out my petals. This is a really easy and quick shape, uh, sort of an eye shape, and that's what I usually do. But remember, you can do any shape that you like. And I cut maybe five, six petals out, a variety, and then I can select the ones that I want to make my flower. The leaves can be cut the same way as the flower petals with scissors or rotary cutter. I do love the rotary cutter for the stem. It can make a very nice stem, nice and curved. If you're going to go very, very thin, you want your flower stem to be thin, I would suggest that you either use a satin stitch or a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine or even just a quilting stitch to make a nice narrow one. If you go too thin with the fabric, it will just sort of fall apart. Now I have my anchor square and my petals, my leaves, and my quilt backing, the batting, and the background for the flower. And I'm going to go to the ironing surface and have some fun putting the little flower together. I'm on my ironing surface now and I have my quilt back and my batting and my quilt top and I'm going to place my anchor square. I'm going to place my anchor square a little lower than halfway, right at the halfway mark. You can move it around, you can turn it on the diagonal, just whatever looks good to you, whatever feels good positioning for you. Then next I'm going to take my petals and I'll arrange them 
again any way you like when I'm happy with the little arrangement I will lay release paper on top of it before quilting this now which is the next step I will stitch right along the edge or pin with safety pins I like to stitch and I either use my quilt machine or my sewing machine about an eighth of an inch in and if the quilt is nice and straight when I'm finished which usually these small ones are I will just put my binding right over that and won't have to take it out if when I'm quilting it it bunches up at all or puckers at all I may have to remove a little bit of the stitches that that's why safety pins might be better I just prefer to use stitching so the next step is to do that and then to take it to the machine and I will use my walking foot and on my regular sewing machine and I will stitch the greenery first. So I have a little stitch around the edge of the piece and now I'm going to stitch the greens. my greens are all finished and I was going to free motion on my petals but I've decided that I'll go ahead and use my walking foot and just outline the petals but remember you could do the flower any way you like now my petals are all finished and the next step will be to free motion the background of the flower I'm going to don my gloves and believe it or not they're not dirty they're just colored from the fabric that they've touched and I will free motion I may go around the flower uh, sort of in the ditch but I'm just gonna start playing and we'll see where I end up motion is done and next I will square it up and trim it to square the piece up I will measure see what the quilting has changed it so the shortest side I hear I have about eight and three eighths so I'll go ahead and trim that My little quilt is trimmed and next I will add the fast finish triangles. Permission given to share this method by AAQI. Fast finish triangles were created by Terry Chilko for AAQI. It is a great way to hang a small art quilt. My fast finish triangles are on and the next step will be to add the binding. I prefer a butted corner binding and to see how I apply a butted corner binding 
please watch my video link in the description box. I will measure the quilt top to bottom and then I will cut two strips of binding fabric that are two inches wide by that length. I will fold it in half and press it, apply it to the sides of the quilt, pin, and stitch. The binding has been sold, sewn onto the sides. The next step is for me to stitch it by hand down both of the sides. So I'll do that next. Before I continue on and finish up my butted corner binding, I wanted to make a suggestion. If you want a really quick binding and you don't want to do butted corner and you don't want to do continuous with a regular mitered corner, here's another idea. Take a strip of your binding fabric that's, this is cut, oh, not quite three quarters of an inch. It has fusible on the back of it. And if you use it, pink the edges lay it on the edge of your quilt and evenly and press it down. It makes a very nice, very quick binding. So there's an alternative. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish my butted corner binding. I hope you enjoyed this little miniature flower art quilt video and I hope you learned something. I hope it was inspiring. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. I really appreciate you watching. Thanks.